This cold start training for the Mirage F1EE is intended to complement our prior cold start training mission for the Mirage F1CE, and as such it doesn't go into all the detail and checks of the real aircraft's cold start, as you learned all that on the prior mission. Here we will learn a shorter, no-checks procedure, adapted to perform the time-consuming inertial navigation alignment in parallel with the steps of the standard cold start, to employ as little time as possible. The cold start procedure that we will employ includes the following sections. After entering cabin, engine start, after start checks. The approximate mission time is 20 minutes. Press spacebar to begin. You can adjust the sound volume produced by the background air traffic by moving the in cockpit sound slider on the DCS options audio screen, which you can access by pressing the escape key. This instructor's volume level can be adjusted with the helmet sound slider. Also, you can press spacebar to skip long voiceovers. When it's dark, you can turn on the flashlight by pressing left alt plus L, try it now. The radar hood can be removed while on the ground and with the canopy open, just press on the latch that it's directly above it. Do it now, as the hood prevents you from reaching some of the radar controls. To cut down on the external noise, close the canopy to its full down position by clicking on its handles or by pressing left control plus C. Open the canopy to its intermediate position by clicking on its small top strut, followed by a click on either canopy handle. This allows you to contact ground crew later on, as with the canopy fully closed they wouldn't be able to hear your requests. The mirrors can be turned out of the way by clicking on either one of them. Press M to deactivate their image, gaining a bit of extra graphics performance. Remove the ejection seat safety pin. The safety pin prevents an accidental ejection when the airplane is on the ground. You remove it by left clicking on it and dragging towards the front of the aircraft. You can also use the mouse wheel. The Mirage is equipped with a Martin Baker ERM6 ejection seat, provided with a face-blind firing handle above the pilot's head, and an alternative firing handle between his feet. Parking brake. Check it is set, its handle should be vertical and out. The Mirage F1 can be cold started using just battery power, thanks to an inverter that can convert the DC power of the battery onto AC power for some essential equipment. Battery switch, set it to on. This action connected the battery to the battery bus. On the top row of the warning panel several lights illuminate, Alt 1 and 2 illuminate because the generators 1 and 2 are not generating electric power, as the jet engine is not started yet. TR1 and 2 illuminate for the same reason, the transformers 1 and 2, which convert AC power from the generators into DC power, are not active yet. SEC illuminates to indicate that the inverter is supplying power to the emergency AC system. The battery is the only source that supplies the electrical system at the moment. Warning horn switch, enable. goes active to confirm that it is operating. While the onboard battery is enough to start the jet engine, it doesn't power the gyromagnetic heading system nor the inertial navigation system. In order to be able to perform the alignments of these systems in parallel with the other steps of the cold start, we will ask our ground crew to connect a ground power unit. Press the backslash key to bring up the DCS communications menu, be sure to have the canopy open at least partially in order for the ground crew to hear you. Good, now select F8, ground crew F2, ground electric power F1, on Chief, Press on space power. Power. Once you hear the ground power unit functioning, you can check it Copy. visually to your left Ground power is now on On the heading control panel the Mirage F1 carries a main gyroscopic system and an emergency gyroscope that feed information to other systems such as the sight, the spherical indicator, the autopilot, and the navigation indicator. It also provides heading information to the inertial navigation system, in ALR and ALN modes, to allow a faster alignment. It is for this reason that we are starting the gyroscopic system before attempting to start the INS. 
Gyroscope Reference System Selector, set to Gyromagnetic, GM. Emergency Gyromagnetic Compass Selector, set to ON, so it will work as a backup for the main gyroscopic system. The gyroscopes will begin their alignment process, which takes about two minutes, during which you can continue this procedure. The CAP light will go out once the gyros are aligned. To provide cooling for the electronic equipment that is starting to align, we will now enable the air conditioner, set its controls as follows. Master valve control switch, set to on. This enables both the cockpit and the avionics bay cooling. Temperature control, check that it's set to auto. The environmental system will keep a comfortable temperature automatically. Auto manual selector, confirm that it is set to auto. On this position, the equipment bay temperature is regulated automatically. By now, the gyromagnetic system should have finished its alignment. Confirm by pressing spacebar if the cap light has gone out. The inertial navigation system, INS, that is fitted to the Mirage F1EE, is an autonomous navigation system, which works by measuring the aircraft acceleration, integrating that signal to get its velocity, and then integrating that velocity to get the distance traveled by the aircraft. The INS incorporates three gyroscopes and three accelerometers. It also includes three servo motors that stabilize the platform according to the feedback signal from the gyroscopes. The INS is able to know by itself the latitude it is at, since it detects the vertical and horizontal components of the Earth rotation vector. Nevertheless, it can't know the longitude, therefore, in order to align the INS once it is switched on, it needs to be fed with the initial position. This initial position can be the last memorized position, or it can be introduced manually. The Inertial Navigation Unit, INU, is the box that holds the INS gyroscopes and it is held on the avionics bay. On the cockpit you have the Navigation Control Panel PCN, pause to command navigation, which allows the pilot to interact with the INS. Turn on the INS, by turning its mode knob out of its array, off position, onto its VE, standby position, which allows data entry before aligning the system. Now turn the parameter selector to PP, present position, to allow us to check on the display the coordinates that the INS has for our initial position. Press F10 to go on to map view. On the screen's top left are the geographical coordinates of the point where the mouse cursor is at, so, move the mouse such that the cursor is placed just over your aircraft. If needed, use left Alt plus Y to toggle the coordinates units, until they are displayed with degrees and decimal minutes. Our current coordinates should be latitude north 32 degrees 56.192 minutes, and longitude east 39 degrees 45.419 minutes, write them down on a piece of paper. Press F1 to return to cockpit view. Now compare the map coordinates that you just wrote down, with those on the PCN display. Press spacebar if the display coordinates match the ones on the map. Press backspace if the position that the INS shows is not identical to the one we got from the map, as we will need to input the correct position. OK, the coordinates that PP displays are correct, then use the INS mode knob to select the type of alignment that you want to perform. ALN. This selects a full alignment, which affords the greatest navigation precision and it's the one normally used. Its only downside is that it takes 8 minutes to complete. ALR. This is the rapid alignment, which requires only 3.5 minutes but affords lower navigation precision. ALCM. This is an alignment from memorized heading, it can be used when the aircraft has not been moved since its last shutdown. It takes just 90 seconds to perform. For this training mission, we will use full alignment, turn the mode knob to ALN. OK, now that we have a correct starting position on the display, and the alignment mode selected on the mode knob, press the asterisk key on the unit's keypad, to start the alignment process. The alignment has started, the align status light should be blinking. 
you can now turn the parameters knob to its STS position to have the display show the alignment status. When on STS, the display will show a counter that represents the percentage of the alignment that has been completed. When the alignment percentage reaches 720, the align light will stop blinking. This means that the precision provided is enough and the INS mode knob can be set to its nav position. A full alignment is accomplished when the counter reaches 999 and the PRET light will illuminate. As the full alignment will take a while, press spacebar to continue the cold start procedure in parallel with the alignment. As it is starting to get dark, let's adjust out cockpit lighting. This is the dimmer lever, already set to its night position, knew it. This concentric knob adjusts the lighting of the warning and armament panels, plus assorted lights. Turn it a bit to continue. This knob adjusts the intensity of the instrument's panel UV lamps. Turn it up to continue. The P to B large knob adjusts the red flood lights of the instrument panel, turn it up. Its top knob adjusts the integral lighting of the instrument's panel, increase it a bit. Use the banquette's knob to adjust the red flood lights. Turn them up. Its top knob adjusts the integral lighting of the consoles, increase them a bit. UHF, red radio, set as required for the mission. The Trap 137B, also known as the Red Radio, is an UHF radio unit. It can operate in the frequency range from 225 to 399.975 MHz. The frequency can only be chosen from 20 preset channels, as it has no manual tuning capabilities. The highlighted knob is the radio's function selector. It allows selecting the operation mode of the radio, AR is off, M is on and F1 and H are unused. Set it to M to turn on the radio. As an exercise, let's tune the radio to the UHF frequency of the air traffic controller of our current airbase, 252.25 MHz, which is currently stored on the preset number 8 of this radio. Turn the knob until 8 is shown on the visor. Good, the radio is now tuned to the UHF frequency of our local ATC, ready to communicate. Radio selector unit, set. This panel allows you to set the volume of the various audio sources, as well as selecting the radio we will use for transmitting. For this mission, push on the green radio knob to select it, you may rotate it with the mouse wheel, to adjust its volume. VHF, UHF, green radio, set as required for the mission. The Trap 136, also known as the green radio, is a dual-band VHF, UHF radio unit. It can operate in the frequency ranges from 118 to 143.975 MHz, 4 VHF, and from 225 to 399.975 MHz, 4 UHF. It is equipped with a transmit receiver and a guard receiver. The main frequency can be entered manually, or selected from 20 preset channels or from the guard. The highlighted knob is the radio's function selector. It allows selecting the operation mode of the radio, AR is off, PAL allows to use only the main frequency, PAL plus G allows to use the main frequency and listen to the guard receiver, and F1 and H are unused. Set it to PAL or PAL plus G, to turn on the radio. As an exercise, let's tune the radio to the VHF frequency of the ATC of our current airbase, 122.00 MHz. First, set the frequency source using the highlighted knob, which selects between manual frequency input, preset channel or guard frequency. It should be already set to M. Use the frequency rotors to input 1220 and 00. Good, the radio is now tuned to the VHF frequency of our local air traffic controller, ready to communicate. Starting is normally done with canopy closed or partially open, parking brake set, and battery power. However, this time we are using ground electric power in order to take less total time. Before proceeding, we will contact ATC to request startup clearance, making use of the green radio which we have already prepared. 
Press the backslash key to bring up the DCS communications menu. OK, now select F5, ATC, F1, H3 Airbase. F3, request startup. Uzi, Press one, spacebar one. once request ATC startup. has granted clearance. Press F12 to Uzi, clear the one, menu. One. Low pressure main fuel cock, switch to open, forward, and then guard it. This is the main fuel valve that opens the fuel supply from the feeder tanks to both the engine and its afterburner. Left and right LP pumps, set to on, left. The Mirage F1 fuel system comprises a right and a left systems, which are normally isolated from each other by a crossfeed valve. The low pressure pumps are powered by the AC electric system and are installed at the bottom of each feeder tank. Lift the starter button guard with a left click. This action pushes to on the starting LP pump. This fuel pump is used only during the jet engine startup, supplying additional fuel pressure for the start. The BP low fuel pressure warning light should go out. Once the BP light goes out, immediately depress the starter button for one second with a left click. Never exceed two seconds with the button depressed. At 300 to 600 RPM, move throttle to idle by clicking on it. Normally, the warning lights Alt 1 and 2 would go out at 2700 RPM, indicating that the alternators are now online, but that won't happen this time because we have ground power still connected, the horn will sound to alert you about this fact. Idle RPM should stabilize close to 2900, the Hydro 1 and 2 lights should go out as the engine reaches idle. Flick the inverter switch to its reset position with a left click. The sec light goes out. As the aircraft alternators are now active, we will ask our ground crew to disconnect the ground power unit. Press the backslash key to bring up the DCS communications menu. Good, now select F11, parent menu. F8, ground crew. F2, ground electric power. F2, off. Chief, Press spacebar once power. the ground power unit is no longer functioning, you can check it visually to your left. Note that the battery and alternator's warning lights have turned off, as they have automatically connected to their buses once the external power has gone off. On the navigation panels, our aircraft is equipped with both a Tarkin and a VOR ILS system. The heading, distance and flight slope information generated by these systems is used by the autopilot, the navigation indicator and the spherical indicator navigation pointers. The route commutation unit can be used to select the source of the radio navigation input to the indicator pointers. VOR and ILS, set to on. For training purposes, let's tune it to the nearby, at TANF Airbase VOR, its frequency is 114.0 MHz. Tarkin, set to transmit receive, TR, and select a station. Iraq has no fixed ground Tarkin stations, but for this training mission, we have set up a portable Tarkin unit at H3 airbase, its channel is 32 X-ray. On the bearing selector box, select VOR and ILS, or TAC. For this mission, set it to VOR. On the armament control panel, radar selector, set to standby, this will activate the radar on standby mode. Sight, HUD, set to normal, mid position. This is a three position switch, aft is off, its mid position is on, march A, and its forward position places the sight in, approach, mode, with velocity vector. Next, let's enable all the electric powered systems. Standby horizon switch, set to on, to power up the backup horizon indicator. 
hydraulics electric pump, set to on, the hydro S light goes out. Warning horn switch, check it's still on. Probe heat switch, set to on. The pitot probes and some of the static air data inlets will be heated to prevent ice buildup, the Anemo light goes out. Radar detector, RWR, switch, set to on. Searchlight switch, as required. The searchlight is a fixed lateral light fitted on the left side of the fuselage, it illuminates forward on a bearing of 22 to 42 degrees to port. The light is operated with the control stick searchlight button. By now, the full INS alignment that we initiated before starting the engine should have finished. If the align light is illuminated steady and the display counter is over 720, it means that the precision provided is enough and the INS can be set to nav. However, on this case we are going for a full alignment, which is accomplished when the counter reaches 999 and the PRET, ready, light is on. Set the INS mode selector to nav once the alignment has been completed. Our currently selected waypoint 1 corresponds to our starting airbase. So, select waypoint 2 as the next waypoint of our flight plan. Good, now to proceed to this waypoint, press the asterisk button. The display will show VERS, towards, and the waypoint number. To see the distance remaining to reach the selected waypoint, select Delta L Delta G with the parameters selector. The distance to the selected waypoint will show on the left display. Press spacebar to continue once you have checked the display. Finally, let's enable the last items on the front instruments panel. Navigation indicator, set to nav N to employ the INS navigation to waypoints. The standby horizon, uncage, by turning the mouse scroll wheel over the knob to center the index, this will uncage the standby horizon. This Mirage F1E -E is fitted with an ALR300 radar warning receiver. Test it by press and hold the highlighted button, a test results report should appear on the RWR display, but unfortunately it is not implemented yet. Shock cone push button, depress, for automatic operation of the engine inlet cones. Nose wheel steering, select high sensitivity, by pressing the dirig button. Flight control servos, reset by pressing this knob, the remaining warning lights should clear after this reset. There still remains one warning light, P-cab, it alerts us that the cabin is not yet pressurized. Push the lock control forward, to lock the canopy, the warning light should go off. If the canopy is still partially open, click on its handles to fully close it, prior to operating the lock control. Now that the canopy is locked, inflate its seal by pushing the canopy seal valve lever forward, to its inflate, gonflage, position. Congratulations, you have completed the abbreviated cold start procedure of the Mirage F1E, -E, including a full INS alignment. Well done. Press spacebar to exit from the mission.